Dear compatriots and friends, first of all, I wish to express my warmest greetings of solidarity to the sponsor and organizer of this event, Bayan USA, my co-speakers, Professor Pao Yujing and Renato Reyes, General Secretary of Bayan Philippines, and to all of you who are participating in the launch of my book, The People's Democratic Revolution. I thank all of you for making this launch possible. The book that is being presented to you today fittingly comes after the critique of the Philippine economy and politics in the Season Reader series published by the International Network for Philippine Studies. It discusses the programmatic solution to the basic problems of foreign monopoly capitalism domestic feudalism and bureaucratic capitalism that afflict the Filipino people in a semi-colonial and semi-feudal society. By reading the book, you can find out how the program of People's Democratic Revolution has been spelled out, propagated, and carried out in the last 52 years in the Philippines in the context of the constant interest and policy shifts of U.S. imperialism and the chain of puppet regimes representing the local exploiting classes of big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. The People's Democratic Revolution, through protracted people's war, has overcome so many campaigns of military suppression under the direction of U.S. imperialism from the time of the Marcos fascist dictatorship through the pseudo-democratic regimes of Aquino, Ramos, Estrada, Arroyo, and what more Aquino to the current Duterte tyrannical regime, which has been trying hard to surpass the Marcos regime in acts of treason and the use of state terrorism, mass murder, and wanton corruption. In trying to serve two conflicting imperialist powers, Duterte has put the Philippines in an extremely bad situation. He depends on the U.S. for the military suppression of the Filipino people's revolutionary movement. At the same time, he has allowed China to build military bases on seven artificial islands in the West Philippine Sea. Then he mixes up the China Telecom cell towers and U.S. military facilities and personnel under the Visiting Forces Agreement and the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement in the same military camps of the reactionary armed forces. Taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic, Duterte has caused hundreds of billions of pesos to be placed under his personal discretion and disposal in order to commit plunder in unprecedented volume and speed in the entire history of the Philippines. He and his cronies have the huge amounts of public money that are supposed to be for mass testing, medical supplies, and economic assistance to the disemployed. He has further militarized the government and has railroaded the so-called Anti-Terror Act in order to legalize the brazen acts of state terrorism. The People's Democratic Revolution has scored great achievements since 1968. The Communist Party of the Philippines has grown from a few scores of members to tens of thousands. The New People's Army, from nine automatic rifles in one provincial district, to thousands on a nationwide scale. Revolutionary mass organizations from tens of thousands of members to millions the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, from a few allied organizations in 1973 to the current 18, and the local organs of political power, constituting the People's Democratic Government in 74 out of the 81 provinces of the Philippines. The reactionary scoff at the fact that the People's Democratic Revolution has not yet taken over the presidential palace in Manila after five decades of revolutionary struggle. But a new democratic government has already arisen in the countryside. 
The great victories of the People's Democratic Revolution have been achieved in an archipelagic country without cross-border advantages and in the context of major setbacks in the world proletarian revolution due to the revisionist betrayal of socialism and the rampages of neoliberalism, state terrorism, and wars of aggression. The chronic crisis of the ruling system in the Philippines is rapidly worsening and is generating far more favorable conditions for the revolution than ever before. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, the crisis was already severe. But it is even more severe now. The Duterte regime has aggravated the bankruptcy and crisis of the system by siphoning huge amounts of resources to bureaucratic corruption and military overspending, masterminding the understated and even undocumented export of mineral ores and fruits and the smuggling in of drugs and all sorts of consumer products and allowing the accelerated outflow of super profits and debt service payments to foreign monopoly firms and banks. When Duterte became president in 2016, the accumulated public debt of the Philippines was only 5.9 trillion pesos. Now it is 11.6 trillion pesos and will be sh surely more than 13 trillion by 2022 more than double the debt in 2016. The budgetary and trade deficits are widening fast, and the sources of revenues and foreign exchange are decreasing. The global depression is depressing. It, the demand for cheap raw materials and cheap labor from the Philippines and the resort to foreign loans cannot be the solution because there is a global plague of unsustainable public debts. The reappearance of the open rule of terror under the Duterte regime is a clear manifestation of the decadent and moribund character of the ruling system. The regime has terminated the GRP and the FP peace negotiations and vowed to destroy the revolutionary movement as well as the legal democratic movement for advocating full national independence, democracy, economic development through genuine land reform and national industrialization, a national scientific and mass culture, and the international solidarity of peoples. State terrorism is running wild in the Philippines, and the regime of terror and greed pretends to be anti-terrorist by equating the People's Democratic Revolution with terrorism. The campaigns of red tagging, abductions, torture and mass murder directed against social activists, workers, peasants, women, youth, lawyers and other professionals, religious leaders and human rights defenders are sharpening the people's desire for revolutionary change and are compelling more and more of them to join the armed revolution as in the time of the Marcos fascist dictatorship. Even then, the Duterte regime tries to deceive the people that he will conduct free and honest elections in 2022. But the people cannot be deceived. They know that Duterte has corrupted the reactionary armed forces and police and turned them into his criminal accomplices and that he controls the Commission on Elections and the TIM Smartmatic Partnership. He himself has confessed that he must do everything to keep his dynasty and ruling clique in power in order to avert his arrest on warrants of arrest issued by the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity and by the Philippine courts on charges of plunder. It is reasonable for the legal democratic forces to be in broad alliance with the conservative opposition in electoral struggle to expose and oppose the grave crimes of the Duterte regime. To counter this the scheme uh, for rigging the elections, to try to promote the election of patriotic and progressive candidates, and to prepare the people for resistance against the actual rigging of the elections. 
The Duterte regime offends the people, unwittingly favors the People's Democratic Revolution, whether he proceeds to hold and ring the presidential elections in 2022 or carry out false flag operations to postpone the elections indefinitely in order to proclaim martial law nationwide and declare a pseudo-revolutionary government. The fluidity in the political situation in the Philippines pertains not only to the alignments and realignments in relation to the 2022 elections, but also to the possibility that Duterte would undertake false flag operations or invoke the pandemic to postpone the elections in order to remain in power. The broad masses of the people and the revolutionary movement must be prepared against any criminal move of the Duterte regime. The crisis of the world capitalist system has been rapidly worsening since the financial meltdown of 2006 to 2008. All major contradictions in the world are intensifying, such as those between labor and capital, between the imperialist powers and the oppressed peoples and nations, between the imperialist powers and the anti-imperialist states and among, and among the imperialist powers themselves. The strategic decline of the U.S. has accelerated what used to be touted as the biggest partners in promoting the neoliberal policy of imperialist globalization, the U.S. and China have become the arch political rivals among the imperialist powers. The rapid worsening crisis of the world capitalist system has resulted in the upsurges of anti-imperialist and democratic mass struggles all over the world especially after the so-called Great Recession developed into the Great Depression of the entire world from 2014 onwards. These mass struggles are prelude to the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. Both the crisis of global capitalism and the resistance of the people of the world favor the advance of the People's Democratic Revolution in the Philippines. The Filipino people must advance their own revolution not only to uphold, defend, and promote their own national and democratic interests against the imperialist and the local reactionaries, but also to contribute the most they can to advance the revolutionary struggle of the proletariat and peoples of the world for national independence, democracy, and socialism. Even as millions of Filipinos are abroad, they are in a position to support the Philippine Revolution as well as the revolutionary struggles abroad and carry forward the international solidarity of the peoples of the world. Thank you.